All right, you guys, we're doing the grocery shopping adventure. So if you have uh, never learned how to grocery shop, you're about to learn. So I'm gonna hand the phone over to Scott. And so you guys get your pens and papers out. We're gonna rock it. Make sure you're real close to me so they can hear me. is going to be usually in the outskirts of the store. Now the co-op is different because I feel like everything in the co-op is great, right? So you really can't go wrong here. Like typically when you walk into like Cash Wise Dance, any of those places, it's going to be 10 boxes of macaroni and cheese for a dollar, your sugar, your flour, pop, chips, just garbage food. I'm just going to tell you it's not, it shouldn't be called food, it's poison is what it is. So here, what I like about it is the majority of everything here is really, really, really pretty very awesome. Um, and even if on your on the worst thing that you could pick in this mix, it's probably still okay. <laughs> but um, so typically though, when you're at the grocery store, 95% of what you're buying is going to be in the outskirts aisles. So think about that. When you come in, you got the produce, which we're about to hit. You go around, you got the meat counter, right, which is our proteins that we want. Um, in the case of the co-op, right down here, you've got the nuts. See all the nuts down there? That's the raw nuts, which I'm going to show you because raw is always better because when you actually heat nuts up like roasted nuts, it changes the chemical makeup. So anytime you heat a fat, it changes the chemical makeup of it. And if it's heated too much, it can become a carcinogenic, which means cancer causing. So we're gonna talk about that. Hang on a second. Okay, so I want you to know that um, we're gonna to go to this produce section right here. And so there's a couple things I want you to look at. Every one of the produce has a PLU on it. It's like a little skew. Maybe you've seen that number before. And um, when you're buying organic, organic always starts with a nine. Say that out loud, organic nine. Organic nine. Okay, so you don't ever forget that. And that's actually gonna be um, on here. I think I have it listed on here somewhere. Yeah, Where is it at guys? Who's got it? Right there. It's under focus on these options. The second column, it says think color, color, color. Um, the five digit code beginning with the nine is organic. I want you to try to buy as much organic as possible. And also people say they can't afford it. Fresh is always the best, right? Frozen is next, especially fat, flash frozen. We're gonna try to stay away from canned because there's a lot of salt and things like that in canned. And we really wanna watch the sodium, especially for those of you that had any hypertension at all. We're gonna really watch the salt. A side effect for this is gonna be awesome blood pressure. I can't wait for some of you to have that. Um, another thing, so when you actually get the PFC plate and you look at the plate, I should have one in my hand, but when you look at the plate, um, on the plate it says protein, fat, carb, right? And underneath carb, it actually says fruits and vegetables as your best source. Have you guys seen the plate? Do you all have your plates? Fruits and vegetables are your best. Now if you're here and you want to lose a lot of weight, let's say you have more than 20 pounds to lose, your primary carbs should be fruits and vegetables for a while. Thank you, Heather. And so right here, see this? See, Heather is amazing. Isn't Heather amazing? I'm just gonna say how amazing Heather Reese is. This woman on Facebook posts her meals with her family every single day. Four children, four children, full-time daycare, works two other jobs, her husband works full-time. So when people tell me they don't have time, I'm like, you know what? When you make yourself a priority, you'll have plenty of time. And that's gonna be part of this journey, is loving yourself enough to take excellent care of yourself. But on here it says protein, fat, carbs, and under carbs it says fruits and vegetables and it says best source. So for those of you that are looking to lose more than 20 pounds, try to do as much fruits and vegetables as possible. Preferably organic because organic doesn't have any chemicals on it. Some of the conventional produce is sprayed so heavily that you, unless you're washing it like in the sink with apple cider vinegar for an hour, you're not gonna get those, you're not gonna get those chemicals off. Some of the chemicals are injected into it. Do you guys know that a traditional apple from Washington apples, remember Washington apples? Do you know how long an apple sits in the warehouse before it actually comes to the market? Who knows? One full year. You got it, girl. Veronica's got it. One full year it sits in the warehouse before it comes to the store shelves. Have you ever um, actually, this happened to me before. I dropped a conventional apple under the seat of my car. I didn't know I had it. Like it was sitting in my, you know, middle compartment and it rolled down. Well, six months later, it rolls back out one day when I'm driving, and I was like, where did this come from? And it literally looked like I could eat it still, right? 
That's a conventional apple. They're sprayed so heavily, literally, they could sit in your under drawer of your fridge for six months and you could still eat it. An organic apple will last you about a week. And then it gets so soft and ugly, you don't want to eat it. So I'm going to teach you to eat ugly fruit, okay? <laughs> Sometimes we try to find the prettiest stuff that's the shiniest, and that's actually the one that has the most chemical. Okay, so we're going to try to avoid that. Buy organic if possible. Frozen, if that's more affordable to you. I usually buy what's on sale. I'm very seasonal with my produce, so I'll buy whatever's on sale. That's what I buy. Like, that's just how I roll. So my, my family's exposed to a lot of different types of fruits and vegetables, which is good for your microbiome. Have you guys heard the word microbiome? If you're tuning into the weekly meetings, you're going to learn a lot about microbiota and microbiome because now we realize that's where, not, like, there's more neurons in your stomach than there is in your brain. So my goal is to get your stomach like a rock star functioning so amazing that your brain is like, bam, cat-like, okay? So when you look at this, nine is, what does nine mean if it's on the PLU? Organic. Organic, Organic. it's five digits. Conventional is always gonna be four digits. Just know that, conventional is four digits on the, on the fruit and vegetables. And then if you buy local, like here it's great because they have so much local, and local means it comes within like 100 miles. Um, so guess what, the, tr the apples and the things that are grown local don't have to sit in a truck for 17 days to get to North Dakota from the coast. They're grown local, so anytime we can buy local, whether it's here at farmer's markets, we totally should be doing it, okay? Um, and when you buy local here, the SKU is gonna have a seven on the front. And when it, whenever you see the number seven leading the five digits, I don't have that on the sheet, but you could write that if you want. Seven means it's locally grown. Here's a scary number to know, eight. Eight means it's genetically modified. So if there's ever a five digit PLU with five digits, that means you're buying something genetically modified. Don't do that is my advice to you, okay? If it's genetically modified, what's it gonna do inside of your body? Turn you into a mutant. All right, so, uh, so you guys got this. So we're gonna go through the produce section and I'm gonna show you guys the organic, the conventional and local so you understand those numbers. You guys got that? I want you to eat, I'll say one more thing. I want you to eat as much fruits and vegetables as possible. And the reason I want you to do that is there's something very important that God put in fruits and vegetables. God put, this is how awesome our bodies are made. This is the true story. God put something in fruits and vegetables. It's called indole three carbonyl. You can research it. I say those words all the time on TV, indole three carbonyl. And what that means is it's literally a chemical inside cruciferous vegetables. So broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, leafy greens, cilantro, all these things. It's a chemical, a good chemical inside those that goes in and acts like an internal mop in our bodies. So it cleans up the mess that we've been creating with the garbage we've been putting in our bodies. So indole 3 carbonyl binds with excess estrogen for women that produce too much estrogen. And you usually know, because women with, and men have excess estrogen now too. Rounded features, rounded breasts, rounded bellies. Rounded features are estrogen dominant. So my goal is to get the estro excess estrogen out of your bodies because about 80 to 85% of all breast cancers are estrogen dominant. So we wanna get the excess estrogen out of the men and women's bodies. We don't want it stored in those fat cells. You guys got that? So my goal is to clean out your fat cells, clean out your liver, and the best way you're gonna do that with, with, with large amounts of fruits and vegetables, especially the leafy greens, the cruciferous vegetables, indole three carbonyl will bind with the chemicals in your cells and you'll poop it out and pee it out and sweat it out. Isn't that amazing? amazing that God gave us something in fruits and vegetables that binds with toxins in our body and we can get rid of them. So my goal, if you have more than 20 pounds to lose, you gotta be so laser focused. I mean, I'm like, get up organic greens and put a big uh, pile on every plate, every meal. Just act like a big Brillo pad inside your body, cleaning up that cellular waste that's sitting in there. It's stored in your fat cells and that's why the bellies keep getting bigger is because you're toxic. My goal is to get your liver under control, get that crap out of your body, literally sometimes. You know, so you might poop more when you start. It's okay, good, I like you pooping. By the way, how many of you are pooping two to three times a day right now? Raise your hand. Okay, we got about three of you. The rest of you, once a day most people think is normal. Some people are happy if they poop every three days. I'm like, where's the toxins going? That's maybe why you're a little fuzzy, okay? So my goal for you is to poop two times a day minimum. Okay, you need to be getting that stuff moving because of that too binds with extra toxins and we're getting rid of it. You guys got it? Let's go look at this view. Come on. Right, Carmen? Carmen, do I tell them anything? Well, welcome to the food pond. <laughs> oh, and she tell them what they're offering if they buy any purchases. Yeah, so 10% off your purchases today, your entire purchase, and of course 50% off smoothies, which some of you already took advantage of, so thank you for that. They're delicious, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So again, welcome to the food pond. Thank you for having me again here. 
I love Carmen. Carmen taught me health before, so we go way back, Carmen. Way back. It was 20 years. It was 20 years yeah. like we've been friends, and she was like growing bananas. Or something. I have a banana tree in the basement of her house. Yeah, so like she was our renter, and she was growing bananas, and was always running and eating green, and I'm like, what does that mean? Like I was still drinking Diet Coke back then. True story. Right? So she was healthy before I was healthy. How nuts is that? And now she runs the co-op. It all comes full circle. It does. Thanks, Carmen. Okay. So all of this green stuff, you want massive amount of it. It's an awesome mop in your body. Get rid of the toxins, okay? We have to, so it's not just about eating the good food. We gotta stop eating the bad food, right? Stop eating the bad food, and then we gotta clean up the mess that we've created. And that's how we're gonna get an awesome functioning liver. So I, when I come here, I try to get as much greens as possible. Broccoli, cruciferous vegetables. Sometimes I literally come and I say, I'm gonna buy basil, chives, dill, and rosemary. I take four of them, and I just make it a point to cook with them in the week, and I'll teach you guys how to do that, because I'm really elementary with cooking. I'm not, my, my kitchen's usually a mess, it's okay. And, but I, you know, what's more important is nourishing my body, right? So. I'm kind of a messy cook, aren't I, Scott? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you want lots of greens, but when I look at it like a conventional apple, let me just show it to you. So um, a conventional apple, so you just hand that around. Yeah, you get that next to your friends. This is your family. Give your, give your sister a hug. You didn't know this, that these people are all your family now, huh? Take one, stand next to somebody who can look at it with you. Stand next to somebody who can look at it with you. Show them the skew. Okay, see the skew? There's four digits on it. You guys see that? Show it to people around you. See the four digits? Okay, now watch this. I'm going to show you something. Do you notice anything different in how these two apples look? Which one is the conventional apple? Right, you guys got that? That's pretty evident, right? Yeah. Okay. I would say don't do this if you don't have to because it's been sitting in the warehouse for a year. Now they have very, very few conventional things in this store, but they do have a couple. So when you look at this one, even though it's kind of ugly, right, and it kind of doesn't look as pretty, yes. right, actually this one that has no smell and this one you can actually smell an apple, which is pretty crazy. Just That's how you know the difference between conventional and organic. Organic produce, you can smell it from a mile away on the kitchen counter, okay? So your goal is to do this, and this skew right here says nine. Four, one, three, one. See how it begins with a nine? So your goal is to buy as much organic as possible. I usually try to buy the bags, like right here. So on this one, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven apples. That's what, five ninety-nine or whatever. So when you look at that, I mean, you're spending, spending less than a dollar for a, a really wholesome, nutrient-dense snack. I'm gonna tell you what else. So you don't just eat this by itself. This is a carb, right? It's a carb. So what do you have to eat with the seed? A bat and a, okay, so an example would be maybe you'd have a hard boiled egg or two hard boiled eggs because the white is the protein, the yolk is the fat, and an apple. That would be perfect. That'd actually be a perfect balance. Usually a typical apple has 14 grams of carbs, two eggs have seven and seven, so you've got 14 proteins, 14 carbs. It'd be perfect to have two whole, like, hard boiled eggs and an apple. Yeah, a little great PFC. Super simple like that. It's all about eating real food, okay? We're trying to eat as much real food as possible. You got it? So what's what's organic start with? Nine. What's GMO start with? Eight. 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 Those dirty dogs. And then over here, when you look at like this one, is from Skyline Ranch up in Hensville, North Dakota. I'm from Center, North Dakota. I was a wildcat. Um, seven, four, 95, 95, 99, 99, 95. You guys remember the chair? Um, 74050. So what does it start with? So all local. Remember, this wasn't on a truck for eight days. It's better. They just brought it down from Hensler, right? Boom. So that's why you know that there's going to be more nutrient dense. You guys got it? Okay, so as you walk by, there is nothing off limits in this section. Nothing. I mean, even if you have to buy the normal apples, wash them in the sink with water and apple cider vinegar. Okay? But I would say try to buy organic apples if you can. Okay? Got it? Let's go. So you can kind of look as you walk by, so you can see, just start looking at these numbers when you see Wanna just the Want to invite four. everybody to come around, maybe? What would you say? Invite everyone to come around. Come around so this can, way, whip around. So they can hear you. Like a tornado. So I love it when I can buy the bags of like this. I buy a lot of these. The organic pears. See how they're all bagged, ready to go. They're organic. Organic apples, they're a little cheaper. So if you're looking for cost effectiveness, that's probably a better, more affordable way to do it. Um, here's something that I'm going to teach you on the Monday night meetings. 
you're going to have to have a little bit of a value shift. You know that in the United States of America, we spend only 7% of our um, annual income on our food. Do you know that in places like Europe, they spend 30%. Okay, they're healthier in Europe because of that, right? We kind of we kind of made it like I want to buy ten boxes of macaroni and cheese for a dollar. Part of what you have to do on this journey is knowing that when you're investing in your health, it's helping your health long term. So hopefully you don't have to deal with cancer or heart disease in this lifetime. So you're paying a little bit more now, but God willing, you don't have to pay for it later on. So I'm encouraging you, and that doesn't happen overnight. You know, my mom was raised where they didn't have much. They didn't have running water when she was a kid. So in her day, like, you know, they just, they had a lot of bread, right? Because that was a cheap, flour was very cheap. And people would come over and they'd make bread. And so my mom has been really re trying to rewire her brain not to say, I need bread with every meal. Because she was trained like that as a little girl, that's what they did to fill up the families, right? So a part of this is overcoming who you used to be and becoming the brand new you who you haven't met yet, right? That, that new 5% is going to be where it's at. You can't take anything from the past with you. Thank you, God, for helping me with all that up until this moment. But the new me is about to arise. Here we go. And you just have to have that attitude the whole time you're doing that. Like, I'm willing to spend a little bit more on my groceries. Maybe I don't get my hair done. Maybe I don't get my nails done. But guess what? My body's going to be healthy. Right? Cut. Maybe I'm not going to drink beer all the time or eat Cheetos. Right? <laughs> you're, you'll be saving money because you're not buying any junk food. Right? And here's the truth. Here's the truth. People can overeat all day long on Pringles and processed food. I can sit down with a bag of chips, and if I don't think about it, I can eat that whole bag of chips. That's the truth. Because there's nothing in that bag of chips that's really healthy for me. So nothing in it tells me I'm full. Do you, have any of you ever sat down and overate on Valencia oranges or grapefruit? grapefruit? Did you sit down and say, geez, I gotta pull myself back. I'm eating way too much grapefruit. <laughs> geez, I'm overeating on broccoli. You know, that doesn't happen. Do you know why? because all those foods have nutrients in them. And when you eat those nutrients, it's like God put these little chemical signals in that food to say, you've had enough vitamin C, you've had enough vitamin K, you've had enough of this, right? What happens with the processed food is we don't have that governor, because there's nothing in it. It's just wasteful, so what we do is we eat it, and we eat it, and we eat it, and we eat it, and then we're like, geez, I'm still hungry, I better go eat supper. And you just had that, you, you see what I'm saying? So part of when you start buying organic and nutrient-dense foods, it might be a little bit more expensive, I guarantee you're gonna eat less. Because it actually has nutrients in it that fills you up so you don't aren't just walking around chronically hungry. Okay, and then if you are walking around chronically hungry, you gotta halt the BS. Have you ever heard me say that before? Halt the BS. You know what that means? Are you hungry? Are you really hungry? Like is the belly hungry where it's growling or is your mind hungry because you're bored, right? Hungry, angry, lonely, tired, bored, or stressed. I paid $10,000 worth of counseling to get that. I'm giving it to you for free today. <laughs> it's free today. Halt the BS. Say it out loud. Halt, halt the, the BS. BS. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired, bored, or stressed. Some people simply eat because they're lonely. Some people eat because they're tired because they slept like hell the night before, right? So I'm encouraging you to ask yourself. Get mindful every time you go to eat. 15 years ago when I was in school for my doctorate, I took a class that was called Conscious Eating. And 15 years ago, that was me being really radical when I was talking like this, right? But you have to consciously think about what you're putting into your mouth. You have to ask yourself before you go to eat this, is this gonna contribute to my health or is this gonna contaminate my health, right? And so stop and say, what's this gonna do to my health if I eat this? You got it? Can you guys get conscious with your eating? Say, halt the BS. Halt the BS. What does it stand for again? Who can tell me? Hungry, angry, lonely, tired, bored. Stressed. stressed out. Sometimes when people are stressed out, you know, they always say stress fell backwards is dessert. Right? You guys know that, right? Do you know that saying? Yeah, so if some people, when they're stressed out, they eat sugar, they drink a lot of beer or whatever, you know, which is best beer, sugar, you know. Anyway, and so, so all of this is excellent because it has indole three carbonyl. Say it out loud indole three carbonyl. And all three carbonyl. A little more excitement about indole three carbonyl. <laughs> There's not going to have to be a surgery to remove all the toxins. God's going to do it through food when you start eating the right things. Isn't it wonderful? So all you got to do is start getting on and eating the right things, okay? So if you ever had, uh, if you currently have a disease or you've had a disease, you're definitely going to want a lot of indole three carbonyl to mop up the body internally, okay? Put it with every meal. we got to get used to just putting a big pile of spinach, in, organic spinach in our eggs. Just put it in there, mix it up, let's go. With spinach in the smoothie, whatever. Just start getting used to putting greens with every meal. In America, we train ourselves to eat fruity pebbles for breakfast, and like we're not supposed to eat the greens. Some people say, you eat salad for breakfast? Right? Heather, do you eat salad for breakfast? Why not? 
Potatoes is you always want to try to buy organic potatoes because potatoes are a lot like apples. They put them to sleep. I had a friend who was an organic farmer and he said to me, Renita, I had to get out of farming. Farming. He was a regular conventional farmer. He said because I would harvest the potatoes and then we'd spray them with the gas and we'd put them to sleep for six months. That's what they called it, putting the potatoes to sleep. That was what they actually called it. After I heard him talk about this, like, no, this is 16, 17 years ago, I haven't ate a conventional potato. So I buy organic. Do people say, can you eat potatoes? Sure. Why not? I love sweet potatoes. They're better yet. Right there, they're behind you. Grab it. Read the number on it. Read the number on it. I'll I've got my glasses on. Okay, oh, give it to somebody who can read it. Read loud. 94074. Got it. Should I tell you, do you guys have an oven or an air fryer or a convection yeah. oven? I just buy sweet potatoes, cut them in half, throw them in my air fryer, throw a little bit of grass-fed butter on top, cook those bad boys for 25 minutes at 400 degrees in my convection oven. I'm addicted to squash. I tell Scott my middle name is Squash. I cut it in half. I didn't know I loved squash until last year. I discovered last year a love for squash. I literally eat squash every day now. My skin by the end of the winter is orange from beta carotene. So you cut the squash in half. You throw it in the air fryer again. It's so easy in 25 minutes at 400. You've got beautiful squash. Sometimes I sprinkle with a little cinnamon, put some cultured butter on there. What's butter, by the way? Uh, fat. So you, do we get to eat fat with this program? Of course, fat lubricates your hair and it helps you to poop good, okay? So it's very important that you're eating enough healthy fat. This is not fat free. Another thing I want to train you is whenever you're eating your greens, make sure you have a fat with them. This is why. There's something called fat soluble vitamins. They're vitamins A, D, E, and K. The only way they can absorb into your cells is through a fat. So that old stupid fat-free dressing was the worst thing that created disease in our country because now you got greens and people are putting fat-free dressing on. Well, the vitamin K in that leafy greens is not gonna absorb into your cells unless it comes in with a fat friend. And if it doesn't have a fat friend, it's not coming into the cells, so you're wasting your time. So my point is, when you have the leafy greens, I have the best recipe, you might wanna write this down. I take one of those little pint jars. You guys have one of those little pint jars? And you just put one cup of extra virgin olive oil, which we'll talk about oils in a second, right around the corner. Extra virgin olive oil, one cup. You mix in one quarter cup balsamic vinegar. Super simple, this is three ingredients and you think you're at the bistro, okay? And then you put a big fat squeeze of organic honey mustard dressing. That's all you do, it's that easy. Three ingredients, go. Okay, organic honey, because I love honey. I love honey but too. But I get it from our local producer in Linton. Perfect. And, but it's... Is it heated? So, okay, so you don't wanna, um, so you never want your honey heated because it gets rid of the good bacteria. So um, the less heated you can get, the better. I buy honey in 60 gallon buckets. Ask my husband, we're scooping it out, it's crazy. Oh. 60 gallons of honey we buy at a pop. So I'm crazy about it because I think it's so nutrient dense and it's natural antibacterial. So people that get sick, just taking a spoonful of honey will settle down a sore throat like that, it's crazy. And so that's, that's a whole other story. But um, yeah, so organic honey is usually what I use um, for a lot of things that the recipes that I give are gonna be organic honey, um, coconut palm sugar I use a lot of, um, maple syrup is a sweetener that I use a lot of. I try to stay away from white refined sugar and white refined flour. I bake all the time. Those of you that are watching me, you know I bake all the time. I bake muffins like twice a week, they're so delicious. Okay, so I like honey. I don't like that the honey is heated that you're eating. So I'd be careful with that. Squash, you guys know how to do it. Cut it in half, put it in your thing. So easy. Uh, don't wrap it in aluminum foil. The new science with aluminum foil is it's awful for your brain. Do not cook with uh, aluminum foil anymore. Stop it immediately. And so just cut it in half, put it in the, uh, do you have an air fryer? Yeah. These are, you don't, they think, you don't fry it though. See, so when people say air fryer, they think you're deep frying something. No, 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 no. This is not like flush kikla days. You cut this in half, you just put it in the air fryer, 400 degrees for 25 minutes, it's done. You got fresh squash. Sometimes I cut them in squares. Like I buy like these bigger ones. Uh, like they don't have any of the big ones. Like, you know, like the butter, butter cup squash. Yeah. And I can cut those. And those are even like four or six servings because I'll take them and I'll cut them and I'll weigh them. And that's how you know. How many ounces of carbohydrates do you guys want? Three, Three ounces for women. How much for men? Five. Five ounces for men, okay? Get your food scales. You're not gonna measure with your hand because if you're overweight, your hand might be big. Okay, when you lose weight, your hand gets smaller. That's a true story. My friend told me that. She said, I'm not using my hand, I have a fat hand. I said, then don't use your hand. Get a food scale, girl, get a food scale. And then eventually what happens is that becomes a habit and a pattern, right? 
Okay, so you guys have weighed before you cook it or after? You know what? I like to, it's not going to change that much. Okay. I'm going to tell you that's a big thing. I mean, it might be just a couple hair of an ounces. With your meats, it's going to be a little different because they're pretty moist and wet when you start cooking them, and then they usually dry up a little bit. So it's going to be heavier usually when it's when it's wet. You know what I mean? Once it starts to dry out, usually you're going to lose some of the moisture in it. It's going to be a fraction, though, so don't get caught up with that, okay? Um, either way. And here's another thing with PFC Every 3 and PFC Plate. If you're hungry, what do you do? Eat. This is not the I'm starving to death, but I'm supposed to be plan. Okay, this is uh, when I'm hungry, I'm going to put a log in my fireplace to nourish my body plan. So all of these nuts right here, when you see raw, see how it says pumpkin seeds, raw, raw, raw. Raw nuts are the absolute best. Yep, raw, raw. When you do the raw, that's why I love this section. When you do raw, it's so important because that's a healthy fat for you. Your body knows how to metabolize it. Do you guys know that when you go buy traditional nuts down at like Target, Walmart, wherever you go, when you go to buy that, do you know what they put in them? Cottonseed oil. Do you guys know what cottonseed oil is? It was an oil that they were using in engines in Canada. And they said, we have excess amounts of this. Where else can we use it? Well, I have an idea. Let's put it in, North, in uh, United States nuts. So in every nut on the shelf, it'll say cottonseed oil run from that it is like poison your body has no idea how to break that down it's toxic it's a carcinogen which means it's cancer causing and it's in every freaking nut on the store shelves at target and walmart so i encourage you guys to buy raw if you can some people say i'm not used to that raw flavor because it's kind of sweeter have you guys noticed that we're used to kind of the salty roasted but you know what whatever you currently eat is what you crave so if you're drinking beer every night eating fast food every day that's what you crave we're about to change your palate, okay? You'll eventually crave all the good stuff when you put the good stuff in, okay? I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. The first week you're gonna be like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> That's where you wanna have, find a little friend and say, do you feel the same way? And then one of you has to be tough and says, we can do this. Just don't quit on the same day, okay? <laughs> so that's all your raw nuts. Potatoes, try to buy organic. There's something that you should write this uh, website down on your sheet, it's called ewg.org. EWG.org. It stands for the Environmental Working Group. They're nonprofit. And so what they will tell you is they give you a list of the Clean 15, the Dirty Dozen. They give you lists of all the stuff with all the chemicals that you should stay away from, from body wash to shampoo to your laundry detergent. So I don't have to give you that. Just go there and print out all, they give you thousands of products that you should be consuming and they're not paid for like by pharmaceuticals or anything like that. They literally tell you the foods and the things that you should be consuming that have no chemicals in them. EWG.org. You guys got that? Say that out loud. EWG.org. You guys are so Yeah, we'll put that in the email, John. Yeah. EWG.org. Let's remember to tell them that, okay? That website, okay? Okay, you guys got it? So, like on that, it's celery, strawberries. If you buy conventional strawberries, they have 120 chemicals on them sprayed in California. 120 chemicals. Never buy conventional strawberries. You'd be better off buying a bag of organic frozen strawberries than conventional strawberries, okay? Fresh first, frozen second, canned third. Got it? Okay, you got the numbers? Let's do one last quiz. What's organic start with? Nine. What's GMO? Eight. Yeah, just remember it's like two O's together. That's how you can remember it. See, GMO, get that two A's together, run from those. What's what's locally grown? Seven. Seven. Why, what kind of nuts do we want to eat? Raw. How much green should we be eating a day? Raw. <laughs> how much, here's the question. How much weight do you want to lose? How much chemicals you got in your system? You know what I mean? How bad, how bad is your liver, right? How long have you been abusing your body is the question of the hour, right? So everybody's gonna be a little bit different. And then I should tell this too, half your body weight in ounces of water every day. That's minimum. I drink an ounce per pound of body weight because I want to maintain my muscle. So about a half your body weight in ounces of water is a good place to start. Here's something I want to tell you. I can look at you some right now, some, right, all of you. It's funny how the Holy Spirit speaks, but I can look at some of you guys and I'm gonna tell you some of your livers really need a big boost. And the biggest way you can know if your liver needs a boost is if you look at somebody and they have black circles or back black bags or even puffiness around the eye, it's an indicator that, uh, and now you guys think I'm all looking at you, right? <laughs> I'm watching you. I'm watching you. There's no judgment here, just education. So just know that if you have excess, you feel like when you look in the mirror and there's black and you guys, oh my, what's going on with my eyes? Your eyes are a window to your soul, right? A lot of times, but they're also a window to your health. So if you have a lot of the black bags or you feel like your eyes are always like puffy or goofy, um, a lot of that can be a really sluggish liver. 
So that's where things like cilantro and those dark leafy greens are going to be crucial for those people that have those, those eyes. Okay? Well, for all of us, not just for those people that have those eyes, but for all of us, but especially that group because their livers need some help. Okay, you got it? Let's go. Okay, here we go. So let's talk about oils. So I love, uh, I, so when you're cooking, when we cook a lot, you're gonna learn to cook, teach your kids to cook. It's a, I'm on a mission on this planet to learn to teach people to cook. I'm teaching my mom to cook, and she's been a great cook her whole life, but she's just cooked a lot of German wrong foods. You know what I mean? So now I'm like, mom, you're gonna use almond flour. You know what I did with my mom's house? We had to get rid of all the crap in the cupboards first. You know, she comes out, sometimes that old German mentality is like, well, I'll wait to use it up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, donate it. Get rid of it. Out of sight, out of mind. Whatever you currently have in your cupboards is what you're going to be using. So you might need to do a, ki a kitchen makeover. If you can't handle it, call me. I'll come get it for you. Okay. <laughs> I'll swing by your house and help you out. So when you look at oil, so let's talk about this for cooking. Uh, when you're cooking, you only want to use a couple oils for cooking because when you heat an oil, again, it becomes a carcinogenic. So I cook an awful lot with bu butter. I cook an awful lot with butter. So you, this is the plan where you get to, we're bringing butter back, okay? Margin is poison, don't ever eat it again. Uh, avocado oil is another great healthy fat that you can heat. Only certain oils you can heat that will not turn carcinogenic on you. Avocado, butter. Another one that doesn't turn carcinogenic is gonna be coconut oil. You can cook with coconut oil, okay, got this? Another one that you can cook with is something called ghee. It's clarified butter. They just kind of remove the milk, the dairy from it. But it's a healthy fat that you can cook with. So really when you look with, you get to cook with, it's coconut oil. Say it out loud. Coconut, coconut oil, oil. Butter. 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 What else? Avocado. Avocado oil. Good job. And ghee. Okay? Those are really the only four oils you guys should be cooking with at all. Don't ever put olive oil in a pan and try to cook with it and heat it. Okay? On all the cooking shows, what do they show you? Oh. And here's an idea. Quit watching the cooking shows and start cooking. <laughs> I realize everybody that's watching the cooking shows is not cooking. They just watch the shows. Yeah. Okay, that's kind of funny. But when you look at this right here, how it says olive oil, this is something I learned. I had a friend of mine whose dad was a food chemist. And he was talking about oils. And he says, when you buy an oil on the label, it'll give it away if it's healthy or unhealthy. And how you know, it will first say unrefined. That means it hasn't been heated. Okay, and what we really, really want is an oil when it says on the bottom, it says first cold pressed. Say that out loud. First, first cold, cold pressed. pressed. Because when you go to a typical oil, like just like typical nuts, the more they heat them, the more carcinogenic they get. Do you know sometimes in some of these oils, they would heat them 10, 12, 17 times. Because when they heat them, what it does is it refines it. It refines it so it doesn't taste like coconut or whatever, right? It, it kind of takes the flavor away. So what they do is they kept refining these oils. So when you buy a first cold pressed oil, that means that it has one pressing and it's cold pressed. They don't heat, they don't heat it. So when you look at a label for olive oil, remember my dressing recipe I gave you? I hope you wrote it down. You'll think one you're cup. one cup extra virgin olive oil. Here it is. One quarter cup balsamic vinegar. Boom, here it is one uh just a squirt of honey mustard it's probably a tablespoon shake the heck out of it in your little pint jar one tablespoon of that is your fat for your greens eat the fat on the greens so your body can absorb the k got it okay so boom understanding this olive oil is for cold prepared things then so when you make the salad dressings or let's say you're making a cold salad then you'd want to use the olive oil there it is thank you honey so look at this, how beautiful this is. I would make this and you make this and you take this to every family gathering and they think you became a professional chef. I had my dad make it at 75 years old. I taught my dad to make salad dressing. He said, I can't believe it's three ingredients. And then they taste it and they're like, this is like fine dining. It tastes like you're at a fine dining restaurant. So keep it in your little uh, pint jar. You can keep it, keep it on the kitchen counter. And when you need it, just boom, put it on your salad. You guys got it? What's the recipe for salad dressing? One cup olive oil. One cup olive oil. Come on, get a little more bold. Quarter cup of balsamic vinegar. And a big fat squeeze of honey mustard. Now you can add any herbs you want. You could go back over there. I could grab dill, so I could chop that up and put, I could add any of that stuff I want, but then I would have to refrigerate it, okay? Because it's not gonna last quite as long. Okay, you guys got it? What oils do you get to cook with? Avocado. Avocado, Avocado coconut, 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 butter, butter, butter ghee, 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 and butter. butter. Some of you just like to say the word ghee. Say it with me, ghee, ghee, uh, I want to tell you one last thing before we leave this aisle. When I first, I was going to get out of health and fitness, and uh, 
I was at a uh, t transitional time in my life and I was actually gonna, I thought I shouldn't be a health coach anymore because I thought I was maybe on the wrong path. And all of a sudden my girlfriend had given me a Bragg's uh, amino acid and I was in the kitchen, I was using it. She actually had given me this product right here. And I was reading it and I was like, geez, that's weird that there's a scripture verse on it. It was 3 John 2 and I was in prayer. I was like, maybe I, I think I'm gonna quit fitness and health. I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not moving in the right direction. And I, I read that and I was like, that's so odd. I've never read 3 John 2. I didn't know there was a third John in the Bible. And I went out to the, the living room. This is how God works. I went out to the living room and on the TV screen, I had TBN on, like, I don't know who was on, but across the screen, it said 3 John 2. So I went from the kitchen to the living room in 15 seconds and it was the exact same verse. And I thought, and it said, you guys know what 3 John 2 is? Dearly beloved, I pray all is going well with your physical health as I know your soul is getting along well. And it was like a sign from God that I was supposed to stay in the industry and that's why I'm still here. But it was amazing that they put, they put it right on that jar. So now you guys know, God wants you well. If anybody else tells you that, is anything else, they're lying. Okay, don't, for, what kind of olive oil do we want? Cold first cold pressed. Say it again, first cold pressed, you got it. Okay, so that's your oils. I think you got a good, got a good, uh, we got such a great variety here too. Okay, so let's move this way. Wild, when you buy seafood, you always want wild seafood. Just remember, you're kind of wild. You're taking it right to the edge, so you want to eat the wild. I love it when people tell me what do they think about wild game. If you're hunters and things like that, perfect. Eat wild. It's awesome for you because they're um, grass-fed, right? They're roaming. They have more exercise, so usually their cholesterol levels are better in wild animals. But when you look at all of this stuff, you really want to only buy the wild. Don't buy Star Kiss anymore. you got to buy the wild because you're wild. Because, listen, wild fish... They feed on plankton and kelp and their bodies produce omega-3 fats. What they found is when they take farm-raised farm fish, you know, you've heard of farm-raised salmon and things like that, guess what they feed them? Cornmeal, cornmeal. Usually genetically modified cornmeal, by the way, in our country, because 95% of our crops are genetically modified. Cornmeal, guess, guess how much a little cute fish's body can produce of omega-3 when it's eating cornmeal? Guess how much omega-3 it produces? Zero. It doesn't make any omega-3. So when they have these farm-raised fish and they're feeding them all cornmeal, that fish has no omega-3 fats in it. How crazy is that? Only wild. Say, I'm wild. Say, it I'm wild. I eat wild. Say it again, I'm wild. I'm wild. Maybe scream a little bit. Ah, I'm wild. I eat it. Woo! I eat wild. Okay, that's how you can remember. You want to only buy the wild. You got it? Okay, move on. Here we go. Um, you can eat ketchup, but remember, it's got carbs in it. And if you're eating traditional ketchup, the, the first ingredient is usually high fructose corn syrup on your label. Yeah. Don't buy traditional ketchup. Just buy yourself a, a thing of organic. Again, you're going to eat a lot less of this stuff. It's not like you're going to eat a whole thing of ketchup. I mean, you know, these condiments will last you forever. Okay, let's keep moving here. All right, here we go. Rolling around the mountain. Look at all this great grass-fed uh, frozen meat here. This is all Thousand Hill Acres. I love all this stuff. When you're buying meat, when you're buying, I eat bacon two to three times a week. I'll show you the bacon I eat. We eat, uh, we also buy grass-fed beef hot dogs. It's called Thousand Acre Hills right here. You want to stay away from nitrites and nitrates. Say that out loud. Nitrites, nitrites and nitrites. And Those things are proven now to cause brain cancer. Okay? Many years ago, I read a book called The Politics of Cancer by Dr. Samuel Epstein. And back then, I was radical because it was 16 years ago and I was telling people, stop eating nitrates. Stop eating nitrites. It's a preservative. And it's an all-processed meat. It's an all-processed meat. So you have to read the label. So when I read the label here, like where it says, this might not be the best example here, but you got right here, it says no nitrate or nitrite. So what they're preserving the meat with instead of those nitrates, which are chemicals, is they're going to use celery salt or sea salt, which they should be using anyway. Duh. Why use the chemical when you can use sea? Remember the olden days, what they preserve things with? Salt. Salt. Well, just use that instead of the nitrates and nitrates, but of course that was cheaper. And so you gotta look at the label when you buy any kind of luncheon meat, hot dog, any kind of processed meat at all for your family. Make sure it says on the label, no, what? Nitrites, nitrites or nitrates. nitrates. And you think this doesn't matter, guess what? Last year at school, the last day of school, they were serving uh, those freaking red Cloverdale hot dogs, oh. which are like poison with red 40 and nitrates in them and I was so upset and so I, the last day of school you know what I did is I sent Rocco because um, they were having a cookout on the grill I sent them a thousand acre hills pack of beef franks along so my son could eat hot dogs like with the rest of the kids so he ate three and his teacher ate one and 
And this year on the school menu, guess what they now have on the school menu when you go to read the lunch menu for the kids? What does it say, Scott? No nitrates and no nitrates. All of a sudden, it's, now they're telling you no nitrates and nitrates. Last year they didn't say a thing, so this is not, I'm not so far fetched. They're now putting it on the school menu because kids are having learning problems from the nitrates and the nitrates. Got it? It's important. Another thing about processed meat, if you're looking to really, like, let's say that some of you had really high blood pressure, which I know there was a couple of you that did. My advice would be this to you. Eat 250 milligrams of sodium per meal. You might need to write that down. Say it out loud. 250. 250. Per meal. Per meal. So what that means is when I get one of these hot dogs, like, guess what the sodium is in one hot dog? Good guess. Anybody else? 350. Okay, so do you see if you had this for one as part of what you're eating, you can't go have a bunch of other salt type stuff with it. You have to be so mindful. So if you are trying to reduce blood pressure or if you have edema or swelling going on, you need to get rid of the salt. Become mindful and start eating 250 milligrams of sodium per meal. And when you do that, your blood pressure is going to be like awesome. And all your edema is going to be gone. And it's going to be awesome. So 250, how often? Per, per, meal. per meal, 250 milligrams per meal. So when you flip it over, read the labels. Everything has salt or sugar in it. because they, they, they took out the fat many years ago, they put sugar and salt in everything to make it taste good. So like when you buy even the pasta sauces, some of the pasta sauces have 900 milligrams of sodium per meal. Like if you're just buying whatever's on sale and you flip it over, it'll probably say 960 milligrams per serving. That is way too much sodium. You need 250 per meal. You guys got it? So be mindful when you're purchasing those products, flip it over and be like, what's the sodium on this bad boy? Okay, all right, you got it? All this meat is so good, it's all thousand acre hills, I love it all. So good, look at this, look at this young turkey. I mean, do you want an old turkey or a young turkey? Here we go. Oh, 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 Young, says young is a great thing to use from this so I, I bake a lot but I only use almond flour even in my meatballs to thicken my meatballs guess what I put in my meatballs almond flour okay so you guys we're, we're gonna teach you to bake when you bring first everybody start. around You're not, yeah bring them uh, hook them around hook them down the aisle come on get down here so here's the honey so you always see how it says raw and unfiltered this was produced in Grant and Morton County it looks like good job so um, a, a, a huge thing it says do not feed to infants that are under one years of age. That tells you it's really not refined because it's got that good bacteria. Now for us, we want that bacteria because it helps our gut health, right? So you can cook with that. Another thing that I use a lot of are these. How many of you like sweet things? Raise your hand if you like sweet things. Okay, so I'm a big fan of stevia drops. Um, we have to tell Carmen to get a lot more of them in because we're gonna need a wide variety. At my house, I've got 10 different flavors. Cinnamon is my favorite. Cinnamon, hazelnut, vanilla, grape, orange, I mean, you name it, I got it. And so what happens is when I make uh, hot tea in the morning, instead of use, sometimes I use the raw honey, but many times I'll just use my stevia drops because it's zero sugar. It's made from stevia, which is a plant in Paraguay. Okay, it doesn't spike your blood sugar, and it tastes delicious. Even if my kids sometimes, if they don't want plain water to school, I'll just put one dropper full of orange, and it kind of tastes like orange pop, but it's clear. Awesome, so if you're a sweet tooth person, get yourself some stevia drops. It's gonna be a savior for you when you start doing this because it's you're gonna love it, okay? Cinnamon is my favorite, I'll just tell you the truth. Okay, go. Yeah, agave, you know, there's mixed reviews on agave. I, uh, there's two sides, some some people claim it's really great, the flip side is it's very much like sugar. Um, so I, I don't use as much agave as I use honey. I use maple syrup. I, molasses is a great thing to uh, use, that's high in iron. Um, but with, again, with the honey, you've got to be careful so that it's always going to be raw and unfiltered. You can, when I was a kid, we had the honey beer on the table. Remember that? That wasn't raw and unfiltered. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if you're buying that one, that's not real honey, okay? Um, and usually you know real honey when you see it, right? Um, a baking, some people use, uh, so I use this for baking a lot, coconut palm sugar. So it lower glycemic load so it doesn't spike your blood sugar as much. Um, this Swerve, I, I got this in my cupboard, but I feel like when I look at the ingredients of it, I'm not 100% sold on this yet. I'm just not 100% sold on it yet. I have it in my cupboard, I've used it once, and I'm like, ah, the verdict's out with me on it yet. It's not supposed to spike your blood sugar, but I feel like it's a little bit more, um, 
I don't like vegetable glycerin. Like I don't like cer I, so certain ingredients I just don't like and that has it in it. But if you're really like diabetic, I would say, yeah, use this instead of even the coconut palm, just because we don't want you to have that blood sugar spike. We're trying to get that, that insulin to put firing out. Okay, but for sweetness, a lot of times it's gonna be the raw honey, the stevia drops galore, you can't bake with them. They don't, you can't bake with them, but you can put them in like coffee and tea and things like that. Okay, um, and then, then the maple syrup. Grade B is always better. Um, grade B is really hard to find because there was a thing that said when you mix uh, raw maple, maple syrup with uh, baking soda, it cured cancer. There was this big thing on, a big thing, I don't know if you guys have even heard that. I went to a whole presentation on it once, it was unbelievable. Um, but anyway, it was grade B maple syrup and they said you're about not to be able to find the marketplace. So they don't have it here. I find it sometimes online. I buy it actually, every time I go to Minnesota, there's a guy out there that sells grade B maple syrup. It's very dark and rich. And so I usually load up every time I go to Minnesota and get it. But, um, We'll ask Carmen if she can get some gravy maple syrup in because that's just way better for you if you're going to be doing maple syrup. Um, all of these things, if you're going to bake something, I'd, I'd love for you to use this if you don't want to learn how to cook quite yet. These are better because they're all made with almond flour. And usually, like for example, on like this banana bread and muffin one, I'll buy this and I'll add an entire can of pumpkin because it tastes like pumpkin. Like I'm like into the pumpkin right now. You know what I mean? Okay, so we'll get into this more as you progress. Oh, he's showing that. I was like, what are you doing, babe? Okay. Hey! Okay, here we go. You guys, make sure you're smiling on the camera so it looks like you're having fun. Come this way. <laughs> you have to ask the person where you're getting it from. Okay. So, it's, uh, it always clouds. If it's a good, it'll turn white eventually. All of it will crystallize, no matter what kind of honey you usually have. No longer have a setting. I'll tell you this, how many of you are bread eaters? Bread eaters out there? Okay, so um, what we're gonna do is, remember, you're gonna try to have a new norm, and your new norm is that your carbs are gonna be color. Now, I'm not opposed to you having bread once in a while. Like, I'm not saying never eat bread again. Okay, I would prefer if you guys would be gluten-free. I've listened to too many scientists. I listened to a Yale scientist recently. He said 100% of the population should not be eating gluten. It's tearing apart our guts and causing leaky gut syndrome. He was a Yale food scientist. He said our bodies are not designed to break it down because all of the wheat that we consume in our country, guess what they spray it with in order to um, dry it out? Roundup. Roundup. If you know any farmers, they spray it with glyphosate phosphate because they actually get paid more for drier crops. If they bring their crops in wet, they don't give them as much money for them. So they try to purposefully dry them, dry them out. So it's maybe not that our bodies are allergic or don't like the wheat. Our bodies don't like Roundup in our stomach. If it destroys and blows apart the belly of a grasshopper, what's it doing to us is my question, right? Now it's in our seeds of all our food. So what I would encourage you guys to do is if you're buying the bread, and I have on that list, you should always buy foods with four grams of dietary fiber or greater. We walk by it, but over in the, food, uh, the frozen food section, there's something called three baker's bread. And it has actually six grams of fiber per serving. Six grams of fiber. Fiber is gonna make your stomach work harder Better and get rid of the toxins. Average American needs to get eight uh, grams of uh, fiber a day. We need 30 to 40 grams of fiber a day. Okay? Another bread, um, if you say, I just want a piece of bread, Renita, I'm feeling deprived. I don't ever want you to feel deprived. I do buy this bread sometimes. This one does not have, uh, in one piece, if you have one slice of it, it's got two grams of fiber. Okay? The sugars are very low in it, which I like. There's only four grams of total sugar in it. That's good. Okay, so it would be an option. Notice it's gluten-free. I like this bread um, that, that's called seeds and grains. The reason I like the seeds and grains is it has a lot of what seeds and different types of things on it. My kids even eat it. Very rarely do we have like a sandwich with like sandwich. I usually have toast. Like I toast things, you know, put them on my griddle and toast it. So you could do this eventually. If you've got more than 20 pounds to lose, don't do this as your carb yet. Got it? But that would be something to look forward to in the future that you could do. Okay, so this is not like don't ever eat bread again plan. Eventually you're gonna bring some of that stuff back in. Okay, let's go. <coughs> oh, with your peanut butters and your nut butters, I'll tell you this, stay away from hydrogenated fat. Okay, or partially hydrogenated fat. So you wanna buy the nut butters that basically say, guess what this uh, peanut butter says on it? Organic peanuts. That's it. <laughs> Isn't that great? It's one, la it's one ingredient, it's not 17. Because normally when you read an ingredient list, it's going to go from the most to the least. So when you have to read 17 things and you can't pronounce 16 of them, that's a problem. 
This one is organic peanuts, one ingredient. That's awesome, right? That's what you want to buy. You don't want the ones with 17 labels, especially hydrogen fat. And for those of you that want the organic almond butter or whatever, you can just go hit that button and it spins it out just straight almond butter for you made from fresh almonds right there. How awesome is that? Go get yourself, it's cheap. It's cheap, go get a big old container of it for like $4. Okay, let's go this way. Um, this aisle is a good aisle to go down real quick. So when you're looking at your pastas, I would say if you can, um, I like to do, uh, I actually like to do bonza or chickpea pasta. So when you read it right here, how it says organic chickpea rotini, the reason we do this, oh, I never even taught you guys how to read a label. Let me just show you that real quick. So get, get close together so I can show you how to read the label. Get with a friend. Remember, stand together. You're friends now. Okay? <laughs> Everybody's friends. And we literally see eye to eye. Yeah, it's you kind of nice. Yeah, you guys are both little, little ladies. Take a picture of those two. They're little friends. You guys are like little friends. Little friends. Okay. So when you look at this, I'm going to teach you how to read a label. And it was on the, one of the top things I said. Five, so the, listen up, 5% is considered low. Say 5% is low. 5% is low. 20% is high. 20% is high. So when you read a nutritional label, keep that in the mind. 5% is considered low, 20% is considered high. So what they do is they always say on here like the calories per serving. So when you look at the serving size, it says three ounces, which is perfect because that's how much we're supposed to eat, right? It's three ounces. The servings per container are about two and a half. Okay, so the calories in um, three ounces of it, it's gonna give you the calories like that, and then it's gonna give you the calories per 3.5 ounces. So let's just go the first first round there. Go. So let's look at these numbers. The numbers that we want the percent daily value to be high on are dietary fiber. We want high dietary fiber, why? Because it gets our stomach working and activates our gut floor so that we quit being constipated and having sluggish bowels, okay? So 5% is low, 20% is high. So total fat, what is it? Low, it's 8%. Saturated fat, low. Cholesterol is a number we want to be rel relatively lower, okay? It doesn't have to be 100% low because some animal products have a little bit more cholesterol, but we don't want excessive amounts of it, okay? Sodium, do you want sodium to be low or high? Low. How many milligrams of sodium are you supposed to have per meal if you're really swollen or have hypertension right now? 250. 250. Good job. So on the sodium on this is what? Zero. Oh, isn't that fantastic? Oh, I love this product. So let's look at so our total carbohydrates. People say, oh, my carbs. We don't count just carbs. We count P, F, and C when people say, and I say, don't look at a lot of just grams. Look at ounces. Three ounces of carbs, three ounces of protein. That's why the scale is so important. Get the food scale. Okay, so let's look at the fiber. What is the fiber? Okay, but percent daily values. 5% was low, 20% was high. What is this? Yeah, this is awesome. This is an awesome product for your dietary fiber for the day. Do you guys know that when you look at typical macaroni and cheese, that garbage that Kraft makes, it's poison. It's literally poison. Don't ever eat it again. I make macaroni and cheese at my house. I make this. I put about a quarter stick of grass-fed cultured butter in it, and then I actually put a big old handful of organic uh, cheese, Parmesan cheese, whatever you want to use. That's all you need to do. You just made homemade mac and cheese. My kids eat it all the time. But when you buy that other stuff, do you know how much fiber is in that crap? In the whole box? Percent daily value is like a percent. One percent. So do you want one percent fiber, or do you want 36 percent fiber? You guys got it? So you want that fiber number to be high percent daily value. The low is going to be the sodium especially to look at. You want low percent daily value on sodium. And again, okay, and I, I don't mind Annie's for a lot of things, but I'm just going to give you an example. Okay, you guys ready? So the fiber on this one is 9%. The fiber on this one is 36%. Which one do we want? It takes a little bit more work, but not that much more work. Uh, another thing I should tell you is the sodium on this. What was the sodium on this? Zero. Zero. Guess what the sodium milligrams on this is? 300. First of all, let me just read you. Uh, the serving size is two and a half ounces, about a cup prepared. Do you know any 16 year old that only has a cup of macaroni and cheese? <laughs> <laughs> they eat the whole box, right? So in a box, it says there's two and a half servings. So we'd have to take the number that I'm telling you times two and a half for a typical teenager, okay? 500 milligrams of sodium. So that means if they eat two and a half of this, that's 1250. You guys get what I'm saying? You gotta get awake here, right? So what's this? How much sodium? What's this? Okay, which one are you gonna eat? 
Knowledge is power, baby. Knowledge is power. So you gotta just make it yourself because it's just way better for you and your family. So when you make this on your PFC plate, you put it on your PFC plate. How do you protein, fat, carbs? Is this? I mean, how, I so this is. A, there's a little bit of pro. See the protein in this? How beautiful it is because yeah. it's made from chickpeas. Okay. So let me teach you. So like proteins, typically when I talk about proteins, I talk mostly animal products. Are any of you vegetarian? Perfect. Okay, when people are vegetarian, I'm like, tell me why you're vegetarian. <laughs> no, honestly, because I'm like, our bodies need some of those complete proteins from animal products. Um, Carmen, Carmen, the gal who runs a co-op, used to be a vegetarian, and she went and got tested, and here she was low in a bunch of stuff, and she goes, Renita, I started eating grass-fed beef once a week and fish. I said, praise the Lord, because I am not really a proponent of a lot of vegetarians, especially when kids are vegetarians because their bodies are growing, and proteins actually help with your ligaments and your muscles and your brain to form. The last thing you want is a 12 year old vegetarian. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes that happens because there's uh, kind of wild moms. But anyway, and so what happens is, is there's two types of proteins, complete protein and incomplete. So say complete protein, complete protein. incomplete protein. Complete. complete protein come from all of your amino acids. Your bodies can't make some of these amino acids. You need to get them from your food that you're eating. It has to come from the animal products. Complete proteins are gonna be like uh, eggs, uh, steak, fish, all these things that have all of your essential amino acids. So just think, complete proteins come from animals. Incomplete come from beans, nuts, peanut butter. Remember how for years for stupid they've been telling us to eat peanut butter for your protein? That's dumb, it's incomplete. It's an incomplete protein, meaning it doesn't have all, you have nine essential amino acids that your body cannot make on its own. You have got to get it from your food. So when kids only eat peanut butter as their source of protein, they have a lot of injuries and they have a lot of problems with growth because pro that is not complete proteins that these little kids are getting. It's so dumb, our whole school system teaches that. It pisses me off. Can you tell I'm mad about it? <laughs> it's a holy discontent, because I have to go in and unwind all this stuff and because I'm like, we just can't get it right. Okay, so when you look at this, this has some protein in it, but this protein, because it's from chickpeas, tell me if it's a complete or incomplete. incomplete. You got it. So it's good because we want the protein, because we want the PSC balance, but you're not gonna get all of your essential amino acids out of this. So when we look at this label, it says, I, I'm really gonna mostly count this as my carb, because it's a nice, good, hearty carb, and three ounce of it, ounces of it is a, a serving size on this, so it makes it really easy on the box. So, but you got some protein, so you're gonna be nice and long on your protein in this meal. What I would do is I'd also measure out Three ounces of chicken, three ounces of shrimp, three ounces of tuna, three ounces of beef, whatever you decide to put with this, I make this all the time. I put this in there, I actually will add in like a big handful of spinach, I'll add in my meat, I'll put the cheese and I'll toss it. It'll be like I'm at um, Olive Garden, but I'm at Renita's Kitchen. So I just mix it up and then it literally has the carb is your pasta, the protein is your meat, and the fat is your cheese. You guys get that? You understand that? Yeah. Be careful with fat too, because it's high in sodium. But this is great because there's no sodium in this to start with. Isn't that fantastic compared to something yeah, like that? Yeah, in that case, in that side. With sodium. You're not fat, you're yeah. swollen. He's in the back right, that's why I've been telling Scott for years, people are fat, they're swollen because they're so full of, so their bodies are carrying around the sodium. So when you start eating like this, you'll probably lose weight. We lose 5 to 10 pounds of water weight. I'm not kidding. When you make fruits and vegetables, your carbs instead of the start, and this is another thing, grains hold water inside of our body. So people that eat a lot of bread and pasta, they're holding on to that water, you're retaining water, they mop it up, the grains do. So what you don't want, when you start getting rid of a lot of the grains and new fruits and vegetables, you're going to pee more. You're actually going to get rid of all that stuff that's been kind of sitting in your body, swollen like. You guys got it? Your faces are all going to shrink. Facelifts are free with the face. <laughs> it's wonderful. I love this product. I'll just tell you, I love this product. If I were here uh, shopping, I'd buy the whole roll of it. That's how I am. I'm like, I want that. Okay? So that's a really great product. Let's go. Almost done. We're almost done. We got like two aisles left and we're out of here. So the milk is really important. Um, I don't do a lot of dairy, especially I don't do milk at all, I'll be honest. That's your prerogative if you decide to. Um, I will tell you this, ma milk makes people very phlegmy. So if you have kids or yourself has problems with allergies or asthma, I would stay the heck away from milk, okay? Um, dairy is very inflammatory, causing people say, well, how am I gonna get my, what do you think, what do you guys know a milk for? Yeah. God, they've done a great job marketing, haven't they? Should I tell you the highest source of calcium you can get? Yeah. Kale, kale is the highest source of calcium. It blows, the milk is like, on the list. Kale is number one. You know what number two is? Almonds. But dairy has done such a great brainwashing in our society, haven't they? They think, I remember when I quit giving my kids milk, my mom thought I lost my mind because she's like, your kids are going to get bone problems, Nita. I'm like, mom, 
there's hardly any calcium in dairy. It's just a joke. So what happens is, is when you look at this, like I love Good Karma, I buy this. This is what we, we drink. I love it, I love it, I love it. I love the flax milk with protein. So when I make the macaroni and cheese that I was showing you guys that I was making, a lot of times just to loosen it up, either you're thickening something up or you're loosening it up when you're cooking, to loosen it up a little bit so it's not so sticky and gritty, I'll add just a drop or two of this, like maybe a quarter cup to my macaroni and cheese that I'm making. And guess what? It just loosened up the whole meal. Now it's kind of creamy-like. What I love about this is it's kind of tasteless and it's got protein in it. So if you're trying to increase your protein, which all of you that are over the age of 25 should be really watching your protein because at your, at the aging process is against you after 25. You know that, right? You start losing lean muscle. Have you figured this out yet? <laughs> <laughs> kind of again, you know, when they say, Pretty obvious. When they say grow old gracefully, I'm like, that's such a lie. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. such a lie. Okay, so you gotta fight it. You gotta get your boxing gloves on. So like, Flax milk with protein is an excellent cooking thing. I use this when I make muffins. I use this when I make macaroni and cheese. I use this for a lot of things that I really want to add protein. If you say, Bernina, I just love milk and my kids love milk, I'd say try flaxseed milk. It tastes almost exactly like dairy, so it's slightly sweet, that kind of sweet undertone that you kind of get with dairy. Um, it's a little bit thinner, but you'll fall in love with it. You'll be addicted to it. And when I read the calcium on it, guess what it has? 30% of your calcium. <laughs> 30% of your calcium and flaxseed milk over here, guys. Listen, what else you got? 25% of your B12, which is an energy vitamin. Phosphorus, which is great for your bones, you got 15%. Vitamin D, 25% of that. Vitamin A, 10%. You look at dairy's label, it doesn't have all that. I'm just gonna tell you I'm not. They, it's sugar, that's all it is, is milk sugar. That's, what, that's why dairy is sweet, people drink glasses of milk because because their blood sugar is down and they drink the glass of milk because they think I like milk. I'm like, no, you like sugar. So anyway, so this is a nice alternative to get your kids off of dairy and get them onto something that's less inflammatory. Okay, you guys got it? We're trying to reduce the amount of inflammation in your body. And I'll tell you, the flax milk is also great for making smoothies to increase your protein content when you're making a smoothie with some fresh fruit and things like that. Okay, we'll get into that. Okay, you guys got it? Let's go. Here we go, watch out for oh, her. Sorry, Don't I'm hit sorry. each other. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, Scott. So any pop drinkers in the group yet? Pop drinkers? couple pop drinkers. Okay, so if you're a pop drinker, um, what you're going to want to drink instead of pop is this, come down here, it's called Zevia. So if you're any pop drinkers, you get Zevia instead, okay? Don't get the stuff with aspartame because that causes cancer in rats and people. Um, you want Zevia because Zevia is sweetened with Stevia. Now this tastes exactly like regular pop. I was a Mountain Dew drinker for many years. The only reason I can talk about health is I've been so healthy. You guys know that, right? I, I, I was so unhealthy. I used to smoke a pack and a half of Marlboro Reds a day. Drink 10 diet uh, Mountain Dews a day. I mean, I was so sick as a kid. I was literally in the hospital four times, like my junior and senior year, and they never knew what was wrong with me. I'll tell you what was wrong with me. I was smoking and eating tons of sugar. That was a real problem. My immune system was shot. But I changed, I turned bent, quit smoking. Then I thought, I'm going to get healthy. I'm going to drink diet pop instead of regular because it's better for me. Well, diet's full of aspartame, which they all bought in Canada 25 years ago already. They got rid of it in Canada. It's only available at pharmacies in, in Canada. And in, no in North America, they put it in our pop or toothpaste or everything. It's nuts what we've done in this country. And so, I mean, why didn't we listen to Canada 20 years ago? Anyway, so uh, the Zevia is a nice alternative because it's sweetened with stevia. It's kind of expensive, um, but you know what? You shouldn't be drinking a lot of pop anyway. So it's kind of something special. Like when, like, let's say you're sitting down for a movie with your, you know, grandkids or something, have a can of pop. You know what I mean? There's nothing in it. It's zero, it's fizzy, it's got a little carbonation, but it tastes like pop, okay? You guys got it? So that's a nice alternative if you absolutely need a root beer. Get the ginger root beer, it's delicious. Okay, that's a better option. Um, I love I love it here. It's also on sale right now down at Cashwise, I will tell you, for 2% of dollars. Okay, so just so you know that, but I love it. Um, we're gonna stay out of the chip pile for right now. Butter is better, so you've got Kerry Gold is a great thing to, to cook with right behind you. This is, a, this is a thing that I buy and we eat at least two to three times a week. I put bacon in everything. You, again, if you're watching your blood pressure, watch the sodium content. You don't get as much of this processed meat right now. You gotta stick with more of like the chicken and the fish, the things that have low sodium. Beef is very low in sodium, generally. Like when you grab a pack of like a steak or beef, it's gonna be like 60, 70 milligrams of sodium. 
um, this is processed meat. So this has 150 milligrams of sodium per slice. How much do you get per meal? 250. 250, okay, so you get a slice of this. But I'm telling you, a slice of bacon is good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I put it in my air fryer at 400 for 12 minutes. My kids have it two or three times a week for school. Don't they, Scott? Yes. I also take um, romaine leaves and I put like, I make a BLT. But I put lots of vegetable in it, like with the romaine leaves, with bacon, and I put turkey in there and the tomatoes and cucumbers and sprouts. I do all that, maybe a little bit of avocado mayo, and I roll it up and I eat it like that. It's so good, right? So we use this all the time. I put this in potato soup. I put this in a lot of different things that Scott and I both do. So um, it's a great thing to have on hand when you want something where you feel like, I want some bacon. Turkey bacon, and guess what? There's no what in it. Nitrate. Nitrites and nitrates. That's the more important thing about this Applegate brand. They don't use any um, nitrates or nitrites. Okay, so it's an excellent brand for you guys to kind of, and guess what else? They also have, um, they also have little ones that are like uh, the package over there where you can get breakfast sausages, like chicken sage breakfast sausage. It's very good. We have it all the time. So you get that. Uh, if you're going to buy summer sausage, know that it's processed and it's high in sodium. It's so old school. It's such an old German mentality with summer sausage. But I taught my mom and dad, if you're going to get summer sausage, get this summer sausage. Because this summer sausage has, guess what? No nitrates or nitrates, nit nitrites in it. Okay, so again, um, sodium in summer sausage, guess what it is? Two ounces of it is gonna give you 550 milligrams of sodium. So this is not something you just wanna sit down and eat. You gotta be super mindful of it. Okay, you guys got it? Um, these things are also very good. Remember this Thousand Acre Hills? I kind of, the same brands, Applegate, Thousand Acre Hills, these are really good organic, healthy brands with no nitrates or nitrites. Got it? All right. Moving on, we don't need anything on that aisle. This is your meat section, which is beautiful. And look at these little cocktail wieners. I could even make barbecue cocktail wieners. My gosh, I might do that. Um, steak, great. Uh, Grass-fed is always gonna be great. Grass-fed beef, um, a smart chicken. So when you're looking at your chicken, here's something that's crazy. Do any of you buy bagged, or, or bagged chicken, like the big uh, ba bags? I had a, a doctor once and I was helping him with PFC every three and I went down to his house and he said, don't worry, Renita, I just bought a bunch of chicken on sale at Sam's Club. And so I said, let's look at the chicken. And I flipped it over and guess how much sodium was per serving in his chicken that he had bought. Because you know, those fillets are little and then they jack them full of a sodium solution to make the breast look bigger. Run from the big breasts. Hey, don't like it. Don't stay close. You want the little cute chicken tenderloins, right? Type deal. And so guess how much was in that chicken that he had bought? And he had a he had a freezer full of it because he thought he did so good. I flipped it over. 760 milligrams per breast. And he goes, and I'm supposed to have one and a half of those. I said, you need to take that chicken back to Sam's. So the biggest thing when you're looking at chicken is on the label, you gotta be mindful of it. Like this stuff is gonna be very, very low. But the sodium on this is, guess how much? Let's see. Let's now I told you some bag is like 700, 800, 900. Guess what the sodium is on this? 40. 40. 40. Wow. So when you get home, flip over that big bag of chicken breast, and if it says that the sodium per serving is 900, you might need to give that to the next door neighbor. Okay? <laughs> Come on over, I got some food for you. <laughs> can you wash that off? You, 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 they, inject they inject it. it. They inject okay. it so you can't wash it off. Yep, yep, yep. So you want to be really mindful of chicken is the kind of the worst. Chicken is the worst. Like, yeah. So that's go home and look at what's in your chicken, and you're gonna be like, oh my goodness gracious, you came just to learn that right there. It'll change your life. Remember, you're not fat. You're swollen. Okay? Because you've been having way too much sodium, and everything we've been eating is loaded with sodium. It's crazy. So imagine now tomorrow you're gonna cut that. You're gonna go. Whoosh. It's like you drop all this water. Okay, 40 milligrams is pretty darn good, isn't it? Okay. I think I covered every Show single thing. Show them where the thing. plates are here. Oh yeah, so the PFC plates, if you haven't got your plates, you need two stacks of plates for the challenge. We're rewarding you. You don't get to win the ceramic, or not the ceramic, the bone china at the end. You'll get a two pack plate that you can, then you'll never have to buy another PFC plate because it'll just, you get to, it'll be yours forever. I'm so excited. And so, um, but you don't win that unless you follow the rules. There's like rules you gotta follow, and part of that is you gotta post your plates on the group. We need to see that you're eating on the plates. You can't just say, yeah, I hope I'm eating this. My goal is for you to read this thing and retrain your brain from looking at this so many times in the next eight weeks that you could teach it to your brother, sister, aunt, uncle, and the governor if you had to, because you know it that well. And I'll say, what is chicken? And you'll say, what's a chicken? Protein. 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 What is a sweet potato? Carb. 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 What is avocado oil? Okay. 
not easy. Some of them are easy. What's oatmeal? Carr. Good. You get so good that you can just name it like that. And then people will be like, okay, are you eating PNF in a C? Or are you just eating carb spikes all day long and wondering why all hell is breaking loose in your mind? Okay? So you got that? Get your two stacks of plates. And today only, they're giving 10% off for any groceries you buy here, along with your PFC plates. So if I were you and you haven't got them, I'd get them. And hopefully they have enough over there, but they're on an end cap. Did you see it? I'll tell you one last thing. PFC plate is coming out with something really exciting. In addition to our hard plate, we're coming out with the first ever PFC microbiome bar. So right now a friend of ours has a microbiome bar where there's, he's actually kind of, I was gonna take a picture. Take a picture. What should I do? Pose. Uh, um, he actually, a friend of ours, I said, I love this bar, but if there's not enough protein in it. So PFC Play is actually gonna be launching a bar, hopefully before Christmas, so it could be like stocking steppers, and it's gonna be microbiome, and it's gonna be PFC balanced, and it's gonna taste awesome, and it's not gonna have any um, peanut butter. It's actually gonna be made with sun butter and pumpkin seeds, like all my favorite things that I absolutely love, and it tastes so darn delicious. Get ready for that, that's coming. So that'll be a fill in the gap. So like in between when you say, I don't know what to have at 10 a.m. And, and 2 p.m., that would be something you could reach for and feel really good about it. And it actually is gonna help this, which the more I'm learning is like, we gotta get this in check, and then the rest of the body will be healthy, including the brain. So that's coming on the pipeline. Um, but in the meantime, there are protein bars over there. If you're looking at a protein bar, if it says it has 43 grams of carbohydrates and five grams of protein, is that a good balance? So if you're looking at a bar and it has 27 grams of protein and 23 grams of carbohydrates, is that a good balance? Better, it's better. You wanna to try to get that as equal as you can. You guys get that? So don't buy the protein bars that have 42 carbohydrates and three grams of protein, bless you. Because that's gonna give you a blood sugar spike and you're gonna store that protein bar right here. Got it? Okay, anything else? Any other questions? Go ahead. I usually buy, um, I buy the organic shredded right there and I just use a big old handful of that, Nikki. And then I like to add, I'm savory. I'm a kind of a savory person, a salty person. So sometimes I'll add a little bit of organic feta or even goat. I like goat in there and it just makes it kind of rich and creamy. You think you're at the bistro. I like to think, when I'm eating, I'm like, am I at the bistro? Oh, it's my kitchen. She's trying to get diet. <laughs> You gotta be careful with a lot of them. They do, they put cellulose and uh, different different ingredients. So you have to be so careful. But here's what I know. I know that when you're feeding a family, there's gonna be some give and take, because I have three boys. So I can't just say, hey guys, we're never gonna eat um, tacos with cheese ever again. It's just not realistic for my family. So I will always buy organic cheese if I do it. Um, but for me, honestly, I hardly eat any cheese. If you guys watch what I eat, I eat goat cheese. That's what I eat myself, because I love the goat cheese. I love the way it tastes. So, beef jerky. You got a certain kind because we travel a lot and yep. we need something. Quick. I love beef jerky, and so I would definitely say Nick's beef sticks over there. Okay. They're along that aisle right there. Nick's beef sticks are going to be awesome. Okay. Um, again, you're going to want to watch the sodium in jerky because okay. some of the sodium is like 760. Okay. It's seriously, so you want to get the lowest sodium possible. Nick's beef sticks, I think, are 300. Are they other? What are they? 300 in a Nick's beef stick, so it's better than the typical beef jerky. And again, with beef jerky, because it's a processed meat, no what, no nitrates, nitrates or nitrites in all those processed meats, okay. okay? And then just watch the sodium content. But it's a good protein when you're in a pinch, okay. for sure. I've been known to get jerky at a gas station. I'm like going through the labels to make sure there's, and here's the funny thing, at gas stations, a lot of them have nitrates and nitrites in them. So you have to kind of plan ahead and get it in a place right. like this before you hit the highway type deal, you know? Okay, what are the questions? Water. Water, I didn't talk at all about water. I could do a whole segment just on water, but like water, um, so the truth is that I don't want you drinking tap water if you can avoid it, right? I, know, I love how you always pull that out. So tap, no tap water because tap water has a lot of chemicals in it. And remember, we're trying to dump the chemicals out of our liver and kidneys. So I would say if you can buy um, uh, reverse osmosis water is really good. Reverse osmosis is neutral pH. Um, and now they even have different waters that are alkaline forming. Um, that means that they're higher pH and it's going to al hopefully alkalize your body a little bit. The problem with our tap water is, as I told you some of you this at the cancer meeting the other night, there's 17, um, 17 excessive amounts in our water supply. So if you call Bismarck Water and say, can I get a printout of the water? They'll send you a printout and on there, 17 different excessive amounts, including chloroform. I think about the movies where they hold it over the mouth and you pass out. I'm like, holy crap, this is in the water. 
No wonder people are tired. <laughs> so they have excessive amounts and literally they'll give you the labs and it says, uh, it says excessive amounts in these different things. So I try to stay away from tap water as much as I can. Pharmaceuticals. Yeah, Scott could talk, we could talk all day about water because the, the, there's pharmaceuticals because guess what? When you're peeing a lot of that pharmaceuticals and the antibiotics that are in your systems are coming out and that's all going through our water system. So now they're saying that in water, there's a lot of, they're finding high pharmaceutical content in our tap water. Oh, it's just a nightmare. And so um, reverse osmosis is the best. You can buy some filtration systems that you can put on your sink. And um, we actually were buying our water that was um, a, a really good water from Menards, believe it or not, and they quit selling it like a month ago. It was in these green, beautiful BPA jug, free drug jugs. It was really nice. They don't sell it anymore there. And so now we need to kind of find a new water Someone supplier. Here. We, we got here. water here. So now what we did is we moved from the, the Menards water to they have the big jugs here. And is it reverse osmosis here? I'm not sure. Um, it's either reverse osmosis or it's spring. Somebody that went around and tested all the water yeah. sources in Bismarck said that they this is the cleanest here. So you hear that. So it's where we get it. We it's get where it. we get our water is from here. We buy fill those big five gallon jugs and we use those um, with our water. And so the cleaner the water, again, you're trying to purify your body or you're trying to make your kidney and your livers do less work than they've had to because they've been sluggish for a while. Right at the end. So right over at the end, end cap, right by the produce, come around the bend there, there's where you can fill your water jugs. You can get the big, big ones. Okay. That's it. Refrigerator filters, don't. Refrigerator filters don't do much. A lot of times they'll take out the scent of chlorine. They don't actually take out the chlorine. Too much chlorine in a lifetime causes bladder cancer. And when you look at sucralose and Splenda, those chemicals called sucralose and Splenda, those are one third chlorine. That's why so many people now are getting bladder cancer because Splenda and sucralose are one third chlorine. Too much chlorine in a lifetime causes bladder cancer. Stay the hell away from Splenda and sucralose is what I say and try to get away from Get away from using tap water altogether if you can. Because there's so you boil it. Boiling it is gonna make it. Remember what we used to do when we used to boil it and put in the irons when we were kids before we ironed? Yeah. What Distilled. was that called? Distilled water. Yeah. And so distilled has no effect at all on pH level. So you could do that. Um, I, I don't know how long you'd have to really boil it to get all of the like the city water chemicals out. I'd have to actually do some testing on that. If I'm drinking it, I'm gonna drink this stuff. Is what well, I was they saying. say for the neti pots, you should the neti pots. five minutes. Yep. At least a minimum of yep. five minutes. And the sleep apnea machines, if you know people who have sleep apnea machines, they're not supposed to use tap water because they can die from that. Are you right? Yep. Meeting. meeting time. So the meeting times that I'm going to do, and they're all going to be sent, they're going to be live, not in person, but on a Zoom link. So I'll be able to see each one of your faces. So if you're not that tech savvy, talk to your grandchildren. And, and download, what happens is we'll send you a link and you just have to click on it. And if you have a smartphone, it'll say, down, it'll do it for you. You don't have to do anything. It'll say, do you want to download this app? Just hit yes. And then it'll load it all up for you so that you always can be present for each one of those meetings. We're going to take a roll call on them. They're every Monday night at 7 p.m. is the time. Okay. And it's going to be behind the scenes. It's not going to be in a big group forum where everybody can see it because you guys might have intimate questions that we're asking one another. So that's more private, okay? But that's every Monday starting um, Monday. Tomorrow we'll be sending out an email with every single thing on it. So make sure that we have your email. That's very important if you're part of that. If you haven't got your A1Cs, make sure you get them Monday or Tuesday and get them to Janya so that we have your A1Cs. If not, you're, you can't be part of the study if we don't have that number. We need that number, okay? And what else? They just restocked the plates. So. They just restocked the plates, so there's more over there, thank God, because I'm like, would that be funny? That would not be that funny, actually, if we, <laughs> if we did all this. And, oh, by the way, you can't buy any plates because we're almost out on Amazon, so you have to get them here. And so, um, yeah, so I would go get them. And here's the thing. Once those paper are gone, they're kind of gone for right now. So, like, you, how do you contact Janya? She'll, She'll contact you. Okay. Okay, you guys got it? And if, and if you are saying, I have problems, Renita, I can't do this, reach out to me on, on Messenger on Facebook, I'll help you. I'm here to help you. If you have success, we have success. But now I'm gonna tell you, you are the pioneers in this. If you guys do well, I just want you to think about how many lives will be saved. I'm, I'm serious now, because if you do well and people see that they can take back their power by believing they can by nourishing their body with food instead of depriving their bodies and hurting their bodies, they can heal their bodies with food. Imagine how that's going to change a lot of lives. So you have a very important job. 
Like you have a serious job. Like I, I told these guys, I don't want anybody that does it that kind of says, I don't know if I want to do it. I don't want you. I don't want anybody that is kind of like one foot in, one foot out. No, nope, you're not for the study. I want the ones that say, I am ready to take back my power. I'm ready to feel good. I'm ready to lose 30 pounds. I'm ready to lower my blood pressure. That's the people that we want on board because they're ready to make the change. And because of that, you're gonna change a whole lot of lives. So thank you for participating. Thank you from the bottom of our heart. We couldn't do it without you guys. So we, let's clap for each other. And let's hug our new friends. Just everybody hug. It's just, we're supposed to have